continue our discussion for your part three of the lesson which is skeletal system so it is entitled or this lesson will be focusing on the embryonic growth of bones so let's proceed it said that during embryonic development the skeleton is first made of cartilage and fibrous connective tissue which are gradually replaced by bone so meaning to say when we say uh, embryonic development there is a of course it begins it it begins in the very first place in the embryonic skeleton with the which made uh, which made of cartilage and of course the fibrous connective tissue that serve as the gradual that serve as the the process in which the bone can be replaced gradually so that is the explanation on the development of the embryonic always remember that it will be start in the or it will be it will begins in the embryonic skeleton with that made or with cart cartilage and fibrous connective tissue that serve as the replacement of the bone or that serve as or the reason why the bone can be replaced gradually so that's it so as you can see in the illustration there is so-called the bones and of course the cartilage itself of course when we say cartilage it is a resilient and smooth elastic tissue so cartilage is a type of a tissue aside from this elastic or since it is elastic of course it is a rubber like podding tad covers and protects the ends of the long bands at the joints and the nerves and it, and it is structurally a component of the rib cage um, cartilage also can be found in your ear nose and the bronchi tubes the inter the inter intervet uh, intervertebral sorry intervertebral discs and many other body components so uh, that's why it said um, that's why um, cartilage is in the or during in the beginning of the embryonic development okay as you can see in the illustration again nakikita nyo that the cartilage is in the center why because it actually covers the your long bones that joins the nerves and it is actually smooth and elastic so that's why it is in the center of it okay so now let's proceed so bone matrix is produced by cells called osteoblasts. A blast cell is growing or producing cell and osteo means bone. So what do you mean by osteoblast? Meaning to say it is bone that is growing or producing. So literally in the, the development of, of embryonic or in the during the development of, of embryonic, we begin into the cartilage itself, right? And afterwards of course um the bone matrix will produce uh will produce by cells which is called the osteoblast so in by that the bone is now growing and producing okay so that's it that is the steps on the development of embryonic from the from the first part or from the beginning of it which is uh it 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 made up of cartilage itself and fibrous connective tissue that can serve us as a reason on why the bone can be replaced gradually it will be proceeding or uh, it will be continuing with the bone matrix that can produce a cells which is called osteoblast and osteoblast is a term which is defined as the bone produce a cell or bone that is a growing growing bone that producing a cell okay so that's it so next we have this is actually a illustration of the osteoblast the resorption and the formation of itself this is actually is uh, pertaining on the location of it as you can see from the if you zoom it yeah that is an osteoclast and that is an osteoblast so another term that it has been um Unlock, which is osteoblast. So now let's let's define first what is osteoclast. Okay, osteoclast is pertaining on the uh, large multinucleated cell responsible for the dilution, dissolution, sorry, and absorption of a bond. Um, osteoclast pertain uh, can be formed by the fusion of many cells. 
derive from circulating monocytes in the blood. So that is the osteoblast. So, so it's very different no, with the term of osteoblast kasi sa osteoblast lang is pertaining on the bone cells that is actually developing and growing. Well, the osteoblast is pertaining on the large multinucleated cell responsible for this dissolution and absorption of the bone. It can be formed in the fusion of many cells derived from circulating monocyte in the blood. So that is the differences between osteoblast and osteoclast. Okay, let's proceed. So in the uh, embryonic model of the skeleton, osteoblast differentiate from the fibroblasts that are present. The production of bone metrics called ossification. So meaning to say, in the production of bone metrics that can be uh, can be producing an osteoblast, there is a certain process, and that process called ossification. And that ossification begins in the center of each bone. Okay, so that's it. So it said also that in in, in embryonic model of the skeleton, osteoblast is different between fibroblasts because. Because fibroblasts eventually secrete a collagen protein that are used to maintain a structural framework for many tissue. Um, they also play an important role in the healthy one. So that is why in the embryonic model of the skeleton, osteoblast is very different to fibroblasts. Okay? So let's proceed to another slide. So this is the process which is called ossification. Ossification is a term used to describe a process of the bone formation by deposition of calcium in the fatal hyaline cartilage. All bones develop from the mis, uh, from the mesenchymal tissue of the embryo. So as you can see in the illustration below, that this is actually the process of the bone formation from its deposition of calcium in the fatal hyaline cartilage. So you can see it below. Okay, so that is the process called ossification. Next, also in the bones are special cells called osteoclasts. You know, it's a a class cell is destroying cell which are able to dissolve and reabsorb the minerals of the bone matrix, which has a process called resorption. So I've already discussed what is osteoclast. So osteoclast can be destroying cell in the process. Uh, in the process so-called resorption, resorption okay always remember that so osteoclast can be destroying cell if in the process of resorption okay so now let's continue so osteoclasts are very active in the embryonic long bones and they they reabsorb bone matrix in the center of the diaphysis to form the marrow canal Blood vessels grow into the marrow canals of embryonic long bones and red bone marrow is established. After, after birth, of course, the red bone marrow is replaced by yellow bone marrow. Red bone marrow remains in the spongy bone of, the sh of short, flat, and irregular bones. This is actually the explanation on how uh, explanation or the, or the process in which you can eventually understand on how the function of uh, osteoclast can be seen. Dito natin nakikita from the steps of this explanation kung paano papasok si osteoclast in the in the development of embryonic uh, in the development of embryo. We can also said in this in this sentence or in this explanation that the replacement between the bone mar between the yellow bone marrow and bo red bone marrow. Kaya nga sinasabi ko kanina that um, calcium can be replaced by the means of a, of a certain stage. And what stage in that is in the stage of pregnancy. So, developing of your embryo, right? So, after birth, of course, your bone marrow from red to yellow, it will replace into yellow. And your red bone marrow will remain in the spongy bone or in the soft bone of short and flat irregular bones. Kasi uulitin natin, na discuss na natin a while ago, that there are two types of bones which is compact and so spongy bone. Compact is pertaining to the long bones or located into the long bones and spongy bone is actually can be seen on short, flat, and irregular bones. Okay? Understand? So if you have question, you can ask it in our GC. Okay? So now let's proceed to another uh, ta uh, another lesson. We have factors that affect bone growth and maintenance. 
So what are those factors pala na makakaapekto with our bone growth and maintenance? Thus this growth that this um factors can can affect with the growth of the bone or there are certain maintenance that we can uh, give if that factors will occur in the certain um in the in the growth of our bone okay let's proceed so first and foremost is our heredity each person is a genetic potential for height that is a maximum height with a gene her heredity from both parents many genes are involved and there interaction are not well understood some of these genes are probably those for the enzymes involved in the cartilage and bone production for this is how bones grow you know one of the main factors that can affect the growing of our bone and is of course is your heredity you can eventually get that heredity of yours or genes of yours coming from your parent cell or from your parents itself so meaning to say um makaka-apekto lang siya sa pag, pag paghubog ng iyong bone kapag mayroon kang kapag may na inherit ka sa mga magulang mo so that is one of the one of the factors so this is actually the explanation uh, this is actually explains everything why kung bakit uh, nakaka kung bakit naapektuhan or bakit merong merong certain uh, what they call the certain affect in your bone growth kasi ito yung mga rason. So next to heredity, first one is heredity ha, if you inherit something in your parent. So that's that can affect your bone growth. Next, we have hormones. So particularly in hormones, of course, in endocrine glands produce hormones that stimulate specific effects in certain cell. So what are those specific uh, effects in certain cell? Of course, several hormones make important contributions to bo bone growth and maintenance. This include growth hormones, pyroxene, parathyroid hormone, and insulin, which help calcium metabolism and energy production. The sex hormones, which called as estrogen or testosterone, help bring about uh, cessation of bone growth. So, pertaining to the hormones naman, it is focusing on the, what? On the several hormones that contributed your in your uh, growth or in the growth of your bone. What are those? It We have growth hormone, tyroxine, parathyroid hormone, and insulin. This part of an hormones or several hormones can help to regulate your cell division and protein synthesis. By that, and of course the cultural metabolism and energy production by that we you can eventually uh, it can affect our bone growth or it can affect the growth of our bone not only with that not only with that several hormones we also have the sex hormones that representing there's estrogen and testosterone that can help or can bring the cessation of bone growth what do you mean by cessation when we say cessation, it is actually a process of ending or being brought to an end. Meaning to say it is temporary or complete. So that is cessation. So meaning to say sex hormones is the completeness of your bone growth. So yon, that it, that's it. So that explains this slide. So if you have question clarification, you can ask it on our GC. So next we have nutrition. Again, uh, what are those factors that can affect in our bone growth? We have the heredity and the hormones and of course the nutrition. It is very factual and it is very understandable that nutrition is 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 again included in the factors. Why? Because nutrients are the raw materials of which bones are made. Calcium, phosphorus, and protein become part of the bone matrix itself. Vitamin D is needed for the efficient, efficient, efficient absorption of calcium and phosphorus by small intestine. Vitamins, vitamins A and C do not become part of the bone but are necessary for the process of bone matrix formation or from the process itself which is called ossification. Without this and other nutrients, bones cannot grow properly. Children who are malnourished grow very slowly and may not reach their genetic potential for height. So, in the statement palang below, no, in the statement in the PowerPoint, it's very understandable and it's very factual that nutrients is import is included in the growing in the in the growth of your bone. Kasi why? 
paano ba lalaki? Paano ba paano ba ma-develop your uh, each of your bone in the body? Paano ba from 300 bone from the from your birth to 206 bone from the actual adult uh, adult bone? Paano nangyayari? Because your bone is developing. So, how does the bone developing? Of course, one of the reason of that is nutrition. So, if your nutrition, uh, if the nutrients in your body, uh, or if you have uh, not enough take uh, nutrients inside your body, meaning to say, there's a lack of genetic potential of even in your height. For example, in the children, ganon. So that is uh, the important why nutrition is a factor on the growing of your bone. Kasi kailangan na kailangan yan. Na hindi naman hindi naman natin sila sabi that that the development of bone is like a glimpse of an eye lang ma-develop na agad yung bone. No! Meron tayong kinakain, meron tayong tinitake to develop our bone. Kaya nga ni from 300, it becomes 206 because of the fusion of the different small or tiny bone. So meaning to say, that tiny and small bone that you have from your birth is eventually become a large bone and that large bone, it can make From two small bone, it can make a large one large bone. That is why it it from 300 bone, it will go with 206 bone. So nutrition is very important factor. Next, and this is actually the uh, summarization of hormones involved in the bone growth and maintenance. So just read it. It is very understandable. It is actually no much more to explain in this part, kasi. Nandito na lahat. So, just read it. Okay? So, let's go now with another factor. We have exercise or stress. Of course, not only in the nutrients itself, not only in the nutrition itself, we also have in the exercise or stress. For bones, exercise means bearing weight, which is just what bones are special to do. Without this stress, which is normal, bo bones will lose calcium faster than it is replaced. Exercise need not be strenuous. It can be as simple as the walking involved in everyday activities. Bones do not get this exercise such as those of patients confined to bed. Bed will become a thinner and more fragile. Okay, so from this area of factors, can we can eventually understand that exercise is a factor of growing of our bone. Kasi bakit? Like for example, You are uh, one one hour, like one hour or two hour or even a day, nakaupo ka lang, magtayo ka, di ba? There is a, uh, there a certain sting, stingy na nararamdaman mo, may sakit kang na nararamdaman pagtayo mo. Or eventually if you like umupo ka, pag mag-uupo ka sa sahig, pagtayo mo yan may sakit na nadudulot. Because there is no such thing like flex, flexible. So meaning to say yung pagupo mo ng sahig hindi na flexible yung paa or yung paa mo. So that that is why it can affect your the growing of your bone. Yan yon, yan yung yung ginawa. Exercise naman not in the meaning na you have to you have to ano, you have to what they call this um karg, magkarga ng weights. No. Or bearing weights. No, not only that, that hindi naman yan lang ang meaning ng exercise. You can exercise like walking running um um yung pagkuha ng mga bagay or stretching your arm in a different distance pwede yon that is a term of an exercise so but by the means of that you will you will uh develop or you will the growing of your bone is in a stable state kasi nakakapag exercise ka nakakapag stretch and nakakapag flex okay let's now go with the frac Fractures. So, what are those fractures pertaining to our bone? Anong ba ang pwede nating makuang fractures? Okay. Fracture means that the bone has been broken. There are different types of fractures classified as to extent of damage. What are those? We have simple fracture. Of course, in the beginning of this, in the beginning of everything, we have to go with the simple Meron talaga tayong tinatawag na tinatawag tinatawag na simple fracture. So these are the broken parts are still in normal anatomic position surrounding tissue damage is minimal. Skin is not pierced. So as you can see in this 
uh, illustration, meaning to say, minimal lang yung fracture. Very, very, um, what do you call this, not, not talaga na damage yung bone mo, but quite. So, very close, yun yung parang, uh, you're so close, but uh, what we call this, yung parang nasa malapit lang, pero hindi pa talaga natuloy. Because that is simple fracture. Yan. Simple fracture yan, ha? Yan. Always remember that it is the broken parts, or, broken parts are still in normal anatomic position. Nandiyan pa, wala na tanggal, wala pa, di ba? Wala pa talagang nabali, par it's like a crack. So, that is simple fracture. So, now let's proceed. So, like this. Wala talaga. Wala pa nata, natanggal sa anatomic position. Nasa correct anatomic position pa rin si bone. Pero, may certain bali na. May certain crack. May certain um, division na of the bone. So, that is called simple fracture, fractures. So, now, if there is a simple fracture, of course, there's a confirm compound fracture. It is quite dangerous in this this time because wala na siya sa anatomic position. As you can see, wala na. Lumabas na. These are the broken end of the bone has been moved and it pierces the skin. There may be extensive damage to surrounding blood vessels, nerves, and muscles. So, yan. Yan yung sinasabi natin. The, the the simple fracture is close pa while the compound fracture is open. Meaning to say, nagkahiwalay na talaga ang, dala, ang bone mo. Okay. Na-crack, nabali na talaga. So, it's quite dangerous in this part of fracture. Okay. That is compound fracture. Next. Okay. So, another picture for compound fracture. As you can see, oh, no? Baling-baling na talaga. Yan. So, that is compound. Meaning to say, open. Okay? Next to that is the green stick naman. When we say green stick, as you can see, dito, it is the broken end of the bone has been moved and it pierces the skin. There may be extensive damage to surrounding blood vessels, nerves, and muscles. So, meaning to say, not only the bone can be, uh, the bone can be damaged in this part. Green stick, meron din si skin. Meaning to say, uh, it purses the skin. Na na naapektuhan na rin si skin in that time, in this kind of uh, fracture. Okay, yan. So, it's very it's very different, no? From the, 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 the compound. Kasi sa compound, wala. There is no damage in the skin. Ah, it, it also damages in the skin pala. Ito lang, ito lang. This one lang. Ang simple lang. But, if you if you compare it to the green stick, as you can see, hindi siya baling bale, but it can affect your skin. So that is the green stick fracture. Next, yeah, like this one, like in this part, you know. Okay, so now let's go with the impacted. Impacted is the broken ends of the bone are forced into one another. Many bone fragments may be created. Ito. Ito na yung when we say impacted na the, 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 yung nabali mong bone, pwenersa na ibalik ulit. Yan. So, that is impacted, forced into one another. Broken ends pa nga eh. Broken ends. Kasi bakit kapag, kapag kasi ipipilit na, ipipilit natin yung pagdugtong ulit without, uh, without a further question or without a further, um, um, what they call this? Without the further, na makpunta tayo sa hospital, wala man lang payo ng doctor, it is not actually right to do na pipilitin natin yung bone to be together or we will be forcing it into one another. Yan ang mangyayari. Kasi bakit may mga ligaments na dyan na naputol, may mga ligaments na, na, na nawala. So that, that the, the, the important thing that you have to do is go to your doctor. Go to the easy uh, go to the nearest hospital for you to be confined para malaman on how can we do a solution in that certain problem so yan talaga yung unang gagawin okay so let's go like for example this kind of x-ray yeah the next one is the pathologic so bone breaks without apparent trauma may accompany bone disorder such as osteo 
sclerosis. So, this is actually a bone, uh, 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 bone that breaks without apparent trauma. Ito yon. Ito yung bone na yon. But eventually, makakagkaroon ka naman ng certain disease like osteoporosis. So, that is pathologic uh, fracture. Next, we have comminuted. Comminuted naman, it is two or more intersecting breaks create several bone fragments. So, meaning to say, it is actually happens if you got an injury when your bone breaks into three or more pieces. So, that is a comminuted fracture. This can be a fracture that, can, that is open or closed. If your skin breaks open from the wound, doctors call it as a commun comminuted open or compound fracture. But if your skin doesn't break, you have a comminuted close or simple fracture. So that is comminuted fracture. So always remember how this fracture, fracture is either open or closed. It depends on how does your skin affect. Yan, paano maapektuhan siya. Okay? So let's proceed. So this is actually the, the illustration again. Pictures for those um, fractures from the transverse to linear to oblique uh, non-displaced to oblique displaced spiral green stick on comminuted uh, of course. So transverse and linear and oblique non-displaced is actually for, for the simple fracture. While oblique and spiral is for a uh, compound, and of course the green stick and the uh, comminuted fracture. Okay, so any questions? So if you have a question, you can leave it in our GC. Okay, let's proceed. So this, uh, if you have question, you can leave it in your GC. And this is actually my question. So these are the the types of fracture. So from one, two, three, four, I want you to answer what is the name of the different fracture. You can leave your answer in our GC. Thank you very much. Okay, and that's it. So that is the end of the part three of the lesson, which is skeletal system. So mare mare mesha no, but it's okay as long as we can discuss it. So. Uh, go lang tayo. Okay, if you have question and clarification, you can leave it in our GC. Thank you very much.